from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. As I welcome back in studio my very good friend and co-host Benjamin Albright. Ben, welcome back from Mobile in the Senior Bowl. How are you, my friend? Doing well. Uh, adjusting to life back here in Colorado with the healthier food, healthier fare, as it were. You um, a little bit, uh, a little bit leaner on the, uh, the the menu than some of the items I was eating down there. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's it's good to be back and uh, you know enjoying that, getting ready for you know trying to ramp up here for I guess the combine next. Yeah, it's uh, it's all coming fast. Uh, we got to, and then right around the corner from that will be free agency, so there's plenty to react to. The Broncos coaching staff is sort of taking form. I haven't had a chance really on Broncos TV really to talk to you much about the Nathaniel Hackett hiring, but I thought not only I'd, I'd get your perspective on that, but also talk a little bit about the staff he's putting together because I think that it's, some Broncos fans out there take a look at that. Justin Outen as his uh, offensive coordinator, bringing in Clint Kubiak as a quarterback's coach, uh, bringing in uh, Barry with the uh, from the 49ers for offensive line, and we haven't really seen the defensive side just yet because they're still waiting on uh, Adriel Evero, but at least as we sit here right now, what do you think about the hire? What do you think about the staff he's putting together? Well, uh, pros, they all seem to be unified in their approach. He's getting guys off the Shanahan tree to, to run that offense. Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be zone blocking, heavy emphasis on offensive line guys and quarterback guys. I mean, that's, that's the, the emphasis with the staff. Um, downsides, there's not a lot of experience. I mean, there's just not a lot of experience at all. The buzz inside the building here is, uh, you know, fresh uh, ideas, uh, and that's certainly one way to spin it. Uh, but the other way to spin it is there's nobody on this staff with experience. I mean, Kubiak has one year of play calling experience. Yep. Um, Hackett has what, three and a half years of play calling experience, and, and that's it. Uh, you got a bunch of guys that are assistants, quality control guys, guys like that. So uh, there's going to be some ramp up and some adjustment stuff, and these guys are going to have to hit the ground running. I, I do know that they're going to hire uh, someone, and it's a, it's presumed to be Doug Marone at this point, to coach the coaches. Um, and so that that's going to be something that he's going to implement, but – uh, and I'm interested to see what that becomes. But at this point right now, that's a staff with a lot of a lot of lack of experience. And it's going to be the same on the defensive side of the ball. Giro Evero is going to be the defensive coordinator. They're going to retain Christian Parker as the, as the secondary coach. But um, they're moving you know, on from a lot of guys. They are moving there. on from a lot of guys with a lot of experience. Remains to be seen if, if Bill Kolar or Pagano or any of those two guys, you know, those guys are sticking around. Yeah. So I, I could see where. They will, will say it like that as a fresh perspective. And, and you know, I've, I've said kind of on uh, the radio show for a little while that as far as I'm concerned, I want him to bring in guys that he wants to work with, right? I mean, we've seen the other side of that when the organization says, no, we want you to work with these people. It doesn't work out. And then it's wasted seasons, maybe multiple seasons mm-hmm. of trying to get on the same page. Bring in people you want to work with. That doesn't mean it's going to work. I'm just saying I, I understand the concept of it. And at least it's, I, I think, from a relationship building standpoint between George Payton and Nathaniel hack it i think it's actually a good idea yeah um you, you do want guys you're comfortable with you do want guys you know as far as that goes but there's there is a, uh, a a point there's a fine line between hiring your buddies and you know hiring uh, a, a collegial work environment and so you've got to figure out which one that is josh mcdaniels hired his buddies hired a guy that had no experience whatsoever to be the video guy that's what got him busted doing the doing gary the, kubiak also hired his buddies and six years other, ago I was say, but that was that was my other yeah. example that went the other direction so there's a fine line between the two you have to fi- you, you need to hire qualified people and that's I think where I get a little hot under the collar because I'm like, how do you know? Yeah. In this case, there's just not a lot of experience. Well, and so teaching the scheme. See, that's that's where I think that this a lot of comes down to is, okay, you have an idea of what you want your coaching staff to do. And by the way, the coaching the coaches thing, uh, Peter King actually wrote a little bit about that. So I was wondering uh, when you mentioned Marone, because he didn't really name a name. He just sort of talked about a coaching the coaches. Yeah, that, that's right. They're in negotiation. We'll see if that comes through. It may or may not. Uh, but that's, that's one of the things. Um, that's expected. But again, yeah, but. you know, working on the scheme, like like getting guys in there that, that will teach what you want them to teach and they have a unified vision. Again, I, like, I understand these are all cliche and synergy and all that stuff. Like, I get it. But I'm just saying, like, that's what I think needs to be reemphasized here is we're not bringing in somebody else to challenge the coach. Now, again... There's a healthy amount of that. And you know, for Gary Kubiak's sake, he's had checks and balances before in the room for him. So that's the one thing for me that I get pushed back is like, there isn't really anybody to push back in the room to tell Nathaniel Hackett, Hey, uh, maybe we should try to do it this way because a lot of these guys, again, this is their first opportunity to do anything like this. Right. So, I mean, 
that, that can uh, that's another thing that can go both ways. It's one of those things where you don't have a, a Machiavellian uh, pursuit of a head coach like uh, McCoy saw, with Vance Joseph, right? Versus like we saw with the Browns when Hugh Jackson was there, right? And, and, yeah. and Ty Haley and all that. Yeah, we, like, we, we you know you don't have people knife at you because they don't know to do that at this point. Uh, but on the other hand, you don't have people to, to sit in there, and it's not like X's and O's in the scheme. That's that's thirty percent of it. Like like the the other the big the whale in the room is the process and procedures on game day relaying the calls and getting them in on time, getting the personnel groupings in on time for people that have never been responsible for doing that. And so you have to have an attention to detail and be ready to go at a moment's notice. And if you can't find somebody all of a sudden, you got to grab, you know, so those kinds of things that I think the average fan, it slips through the crack on, like those are things that, that perhaps need to be kind of kept an eye on, especially in preseason games early on. See if the Broncos get delay of game penalties, things like that, or if they seem to be late in the clock uh, in getting things in, just keep your eye on those kinds of situations. Yeah. No, that's, that's really intriguing for me too. So I, again, I, I saw a lot of Broncos fans. I've seen a lot of Broncos fans be concerned about the staff. And, and I, I just say, first of all, just because they're a name necessarily doesn't necessarily mean it's the right fit. And so I'm not acknowledging or saying that, that you're wrong or that the coaching staff that Nathaniel Hackett's putting together is the perfect coaching staff. Look, I, I like guys like Mike McDaniel that ended up getting the job with the mm-hmm. Dolphins. I liked plenty of other coordinators that could have been brought in, but in the end, you have to bring in the guys that you think will get the job done. And we'll, we'll, I think cautious optimism is the best way to approach this and see see if this plan works. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it in, you know, in OTAs and training camps and kind of seeing where these guys are. It's going to be energetic, we know that, but but in the end, how much, how far does that go versus right. what, you, you know, you can't just be the energy guy. Yeah. At the end of the day, you've got to have the other legs to, to stand on or you don't form a tripod. And what was uh, what was the overall message you heard out in Mobile at the Senior Bowl as regards to the coaching staff and what, what the Broncos have done hiring Nathaniel Hackett? Because again, it was the first coach hired in, in this entire group of coaches. I mean, no, Matt Eberflus was right behind it, but you understand my point like this all kind of happened right there what are they saying out in mobile about this one uh well there's just kind of two different veins of response um everybody loves nathaniel hackett as far as he's a nice guy um so there's there's that yeah he's a great dude he's a great dude he, you know he's a great guy you're gonna like him as a person and i'm like okay but what about him as a coach and that's where it started you started to get the the look downs and the shuffle a little bit um there were several questions about well why did you hire why did you fire Vic Fangio to hire why didn't you just get him a good offensive coordinator and a, and a and a good quarterback and you know that that kind of pushback kind of made me a little nervous so Hackett's got his doubters around the league they won't say it publicly but you know privately there's some people that doubt that around the league so it's going to be incumbent upon him to take this energy that he has and and turn that into I am a great coach. Let me show you. I'll say this because I've I've obviously been on those trips with you out to Mobile and the love for Vic Fangio from football guys. Oh, it's universal. It is unbelievable. Like mm-hmm. like when we were out there last year, people were like, "You guys aren't really thinking about getting rid." Of-. He's like one of the best football minds mm-hmm. in the game. You wouldn't possibly get rid of him because they know he'd be hired. You know, the the job offers would be right there for him. Uh, so it's funny to me to hear that where they're like, "Well, Vic Fangio, if you would have had." A quarterback, if he had had a better OC, who knows what could have happened here. But but again, the change is is multifunctional here. And I think something I want to get into maybe on the next show is about the why. Why now did they go with an offensive-minded coach? Why now did they go specifically with Nathaniel Hackett? And more importantly, what is it about the culture they felt needed changing? Because that's exactly what this guy represents, a stark contrast in culture. Yeah, I, I think that is the question. Uh, we can get into that in the next one, but I mean, that that is the answer. So, yeah, exactly. All right. For Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country tonight.